going to fail this test tomorrow. I mean, I, I haven't been to class in a week. It's, everything's just like one interview after another. And when I'm not telling people about what happened, I can't even think. I really think you should tell Professor Smith what's going on. You're in no shape to taste this test tomorrow. I know, but I don't want anybody else to know what happened. I mean, enough people already know. I just want everything to go back to normal. I know. I'm so sorry. Come on, let's study together. As faculty members, we don't always know the challenges our students are facing. Sometimes our students disclose their struggles to us and sometimes they don't. How often have students' academic performances been impacted by issues that they keep to themselves or among a small group of friends, leaving professors completely out of the loop? What about students who are still learning how to balance their academic responsibilities with their co-curricular commitments, like Songfest? Or students who are just learning about the cultural expectations of the American University classroom for the first time. Consider, for example, international students or first-generation college students. How do we create a compassionate classroom, one that addresses the various needs of all of these students, but also grants second chances in ways that are fair to the rest of the class? What do we do about Ari? You were totally right, Kendall. I completely blew this test. No, 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 stop beating yourself up. What about uh, retaking at the end of the semester? Wait, what do you mean? Remember, we can use our Vineyard app to do so. We can buy back old assignments, even tests. You can go to tutoring, you can go to office hours, extra study sessions, and then at the end of the semester, you can buy back the exam. Oh my god, that's crazy. How does it work? Let me show you. Okay. So log into the Vineyard app. You know the one we use to check into class every day. Oh, OK. So the one that we uh, use when we tap our phones together in office hours when we see Dr. Smith? Right. The one we use to upload the photos from the Getty Villa, the Getty Villa field trip. So every time you've done something like that, and I know you did a lot of it before the incident, you've been earning tokens. They're like money that's only good inside of Hume 111. You can use them to buy a redo on the last test. Ugh. The problem is I don't have enough tokens. You're right. I only owned 45 before everything, you know, turned upside down. My grade was so low on this test that I need 60 tokens to be able to retake it. Don't worry, you've earned enough tokens on your own to be eligible for donations. So I can give you some of my own. Professor Smith calls it caritas. Okay, now receive my donation and try to buy back the test again. I got your donation! Thank you so much. Now to buy back the test. In the compassionate classroom, every student can earn a second chance. Students earn tokens by engaging in whatever behaviors the professor believes furthers the learning outcomes of the class. And then they take those tokens and redeem them for opportunities to improve their course performance. Our approach is merciful because it gives students a second chance, regardless of the reason that they need that second chance. It even gives students an opportunity to be merciful to each other. Our approach is just, because the magnitude of the benefit a student receives is proportionate to their effort. 
Even students who receive donations, like Ari, must meet a certain minimum threshold of tokens they've earned on their own before they can accept the help. And various other safeguards are built in to prevent abuses. And our approach is prudent because it insists that students still must make progress toward the course learning outcomes. We're not talking about extra credit. Token redemption does not substitute for high quality academic work. Instead, it gives students another chance to produce high quality academic work. This is more than an idea. For the past five years at Pepperdine, every class I've taught has implemented aspects of this teaching philosophy. More than a thousand students have experienced it. Last year in Humanities 111, for example, 75% of the students took their second chances and improved their course outcomes. I know now how to balance the cultivation of responsibility with some much needed merciful flexibility. But the bookkeeping, <laughs> the bookkeeping continues to be a challenge. Up to now, we've implemented this compassionate classroom using a combination of courses, Google Forms, Google Sheets, and a lot of manual data processing by both professors and students. The system is complex to set up in the first place. It's difficult to transfer from course to course and from semester to semester. And this has presented a high barrier to entry for other faculty members who are attracted to this idea, who want to implement structural compassion within their classrooms, but frankly are intimidated by complex spreadsheet formulas. Because you see, the app that you saw Ari and Kendall using, it doesn't exist yet. But with the financial and institutional support that comes along with a Waves of Innovation Award, it easily could. We just need your help to build it, to test it. To deploy it here at Pepperdine and then share this vision with our colleagues and their students at other institutions. To make the compassionate classroom a reality everywhere. Ha <laughs> ha